See if you've just joined us, welcome back. We're live on SABC3. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We're talking about the wild side of things, baboons, and Jenny Trithawan from Baboon Matters joins us. The trust fund, of course, or the fund, the trust, rather, that is all about the protection of our closest relatives. And we've been learning a lot from her about understanding these primates and what we can better do to secure our homes and, of course, coexist with them as well. I want to tell you this story uh, because you said one of the most important things to do, Jenny, is to remain calm. Uh, Andrew Gorman sent us a story. He says, um, uh, he got up very early one morning to do some work while his wife slept and his wife remembers turning over thinking that he was on the bed only to find a big baboon right there. Now you tell me how you remain calm in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, Andrew, you haven't shaved in such a long time. And then just... <laughs> <laughs> how do you remain calm in that? What do you do? I mean, look, you... you the lady um, taking Andrew's partner could have just easily got... It would be extremely, extremely frightening. I accept that it would be a great big shock, and I'm sure she did have a shock, but just stay calm, get out of the bed, move out of the room, make sure he's got an escape route. Um, but I've got a, a lovely story to counter your Andrew story. So mm. one of our favourite and best-known baboons of all time was Eric Baboon, and he was doing a... a he was dispersing and going through from Komiki all the way through to Hart Bay, and one lady phoned one day and she said Eric was in the kitchen. It was a winter's day, cold, mm -hmm. rainy day. So I said to her, look, I, I can't get to you right now, but leave the door open and he'll take what he's getting and he'll leave. So she phoned back 20 minutes later. She said, look, he's still in the kitchen. So I said, look, I'm, Is he I'm, making scrambled eggs? I'm getting to you as soon as I can. <laughs> and the last call came, she said, he's gone upstairs. And I said, what's he doing? She said, he's asleep on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> It had breakfast, it was a cold day, what do you do? Go back I to mean, bed. I'm honest, if that situation happens to me, I'm not exactly going to go to the baboon and be like, yo, get out of my bed. I'm like, okay, it, dude. nap, I'm going to call the authorities and, <laughs> and, and they'll handle Let it. Let them come. And you said one of the big dangers is that, uh, you know, you need to kind of secure the environment, especially where the food is available, because they can come back. As Lucola Markin said that uh, her family were on a campsite somewhere and they had their tent raided by baboons, and it didn't end there because that happened uh, in the morning, and that very same night, yeah. the baboons came back. So then yeah. what can we do differently then to create a sustainable environment where we can coexist with these animals? Okay, so if you think about it from a baboon, baboon's point of view, and I'm just going to use this example here. So a baboon looking through a window, if a baboon was in the garden, for example, mm -hmm. looking through the window, he would see that bunch of bananas, which would be extremely attractive to him. Yes. So he would want to come in and get the bananas. He doesn't want to come in and steal your television or do anything to you, he mm. simply wants to come and get that very easy food source. Yes. So in situations where you're camping at campsites, it's really good to make sure that the food isn't visibly displayed if, if you're in a campsite. Mm -hmm. In your own home environment, what a lot of residents do is, is we display our fruit beautifully in big fruit bowls. And for a baboon, looking again through the window, he sees this and wow, that is an easy access of food. That means he's got the rest of the day off. Right. If your boss said to you, listen, you can just do a quick 10 minutes work this morning and the rest of the day you're off, you're going to take it. Does that make so, me a baboon? I'm sorry. <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> so yeah, if, if, if you make sure there's no easily, um, the food's not easily available, mm. it's not on display, you can't see it. Dustbins are a big one, you know, the city of Cape Town has provided baboon-proof bins for many of the residential areas, but if residents overfill those bins, yes. there's too much rubbish, if they don't lock the bins, then the baboons are still going to get access to your waste. Right, thank you so, so much. And I'm sure we can get more information from the Baboon Matters yes, yeah. Trust uh, website. Thank you very much, Jenny, for joining thank us you. this morning. And we hope that that uh, sheds some light on your baboon stories or your baboon encounters. And we'll be doing it again, of course, uh, next week. Right now, Zola Nene is hanging out with one of our baboons in the kitchen.